Hello friends, I am Arpit and I am here with today's analysis. Today is 26th of August and we are going to deal with only one very important topic which is the news that is Unified Pension Scheme. You might have heard about Social Security. Social Security is a sense of security which the people have for their old age and for their health. There are two components of Social Security. One is insurance and the other is pension. When we talk about pension, the overall pension penetration in India is less. Before 2004, the central government employees were covered under old pension scheme, all of them, where they were entitled for 50% of the pension of their last drawn salary. With the introduction of national pension scheme in 2004, this old pension scheme was replaced except for members of the, uh, I would say, armed forces. Now you had to contribute and according to your contributions, you would get your pensions, which was not fixed also because those pensions were market linked. With this unified payment system into place, it is basically a hybrid model of both OPS, that is old pension scheme and the new pension scheme on the national pension scheme. So let's get started and see what is there in this unified pension scheme, which is going to be a major, major move by the government because you know, government is insuring pension for 23 lakh central government employees. For the state government employees, it is voluntary for the state governments to adopt this or not. So it is totally up to them because pension definitely, you know, entails uh, a lot of, I would say, burden, financial burden on the governments. So this burden has to be smartly managed. This is what the government feels. Before 2004, when the old pension scheme was there, so the employees did not contribute from their monthly salary to get the pensions. Whatever their last month's drawn salary was, 50% of that they would be getting as pension. That was a simple formula and they did not contribute anything for getting that pension throughout their life. This was changed in the National Pension Scheme in 2004. This is there in this scheme also. But there are some changes made and that is why this unified pension scheme is kind of a middle ground between the old pension scheme and the new pension scheme so that the burden on the government the financial burden on the government of the pensions is not so high why pensions are needed you need to understand that as well pensions are basically a very important component of a social security net social security net yes it secures you from the vulnerabilities of the old age when you are not in the working age group. It helps you meet your finances. Well, another aspect of social security is insurance. Insurance can be medical insurance, health insurance kind of, or, or I would say travel insurance or death insurance, life insurance we call it. So this insurance and pension secures you and enables you to lead a good social life. That is why it is called as social security. Now from this unified pension scheme, you know, the union cabinet has approved this. It is chaired by the prime minister and, you know, it is going to benefit around 23 lakh central government employees. Approval and rollout, UPS was approved by the union cabinet and is set to be implemented from April 1st, 2025. That is next year. State adoption, it is voluntary for the states to adopt. States have the option to adopt UPS architecture, which contrasts with the OPS unfunded liabilities. Unfunded liabilities means you don't, as an employee, you don't fund, you don't contribute in that fund, in your pension fund. It is all borne by the government. So it is basically a liability of the government. An absence of employee contributions. Employee contributions are not there. The union cabinet's recent approval of the unified pension scheme represents a significant shift in India's pension policy for government employees. UPS aims to address the limitations of the previous pension systems, that is the old pension systems and the national pension system, that is NPS, which was introduced in 2004. See, old pension system, if I say that government does not contribute anything and gets, you know, paid till, I would say, death as pensions. That is also not justified, no. It is additional burden on the government and it is our taxpayers' money. And it was a widely believed thought or widely believed, I would say, notion earlier that government service, government servants were not believed to be efficient. 
सो पीपल वर लाइक कि भाई सरकारी नौकरी इज इक्वल टू यू बिकम द दमाद ऑफ सरकार यू अर्न वाइल यू आर वर्किंग एंड यू नो द एफिशंसी ऑफ गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉयज वॉज ऑलवेज क्वेश्चनेबल बट यू गुड गेट द सैलरी एवरी मंथ दैट इज वेयर यू आर सिक्योर्ड एंड आफ्टर रिटायरमेंट ऑल्सो यू गेट द सैलरी सो दिस इज वॉट वॉज देयर नाउ all these shortcomings have been tackled what are the features of this particular uh, i would say ups that is unified pension scheme it assures a pension of 50% of the basic salary for those who joined the service after january 1 2004 means when the national pension scheme started under the national pension scheme so those people who were with, uh, were eligible for national pension scheme are now eligible for ups they can convert to ups 99% of the employees will get benefited out of this when they will be turning to ups features pension amount guarantees 50% of the average basic pay over the last 12 months of service with a proportionate pension for those with less than 25 years of service so those who are who have served minimum 25 years they will be getting 50% and those who have served less so in proportion their you know pension amount will reduce minimum pension of 10000 per month is guaranteed for those with at least 10 years of service obviously why we are talking about minimum because you know there are contributions by you if you have contributed more in your service you your pension amount may be high even if you have turned served 10 years of uh, i would say service minimum the 10000 you are eligible but beyond that it totally depends upon what you have contributed family pension In the case of death, family receives sixty percent of the retiree's pension amount, ensuring continued support. So you are secure over here as well. Means your family is secured over here. Lump sum payment. This is something which is a very good, I would say, step. Retirees receive a lump sum amount calculated as one tenth of their last drawn monthly pay, including DA, that is dearness allowance, for every six months of service completed. So for every six months of service completed, their dearness allowance gets accumulated. and they receive that at the end of uh, at the time of retirement that is lump sum amount that was there in the old pension scheme new pension scheme totally depended upon what you contributed inflation protection ups includes provision for adjusting pensions based on the all india consumer price index for industrial workers so consumer price index basically tracks down retail inflation and there is one sub segment of i would say uh, cpi that is uh, cpi for industrial workers which tracks down the consumption patterns and consumption needs of the industrial workers and accordingly you know it uh, creates a that index for those industrial workers so that industrial workers wala index will be you know used for inflation protection for that i would say in uh, pension amount so in a nutshell if i would say that this is inflation indexed means inflation the impact of inflation will be accommodated in this and hence their investments the you know the contributions by the employees they will be safe and secure from inflation contributory nature employees contribute 10% of their salary while the government contributes 18.5% so the con government contribution is more as compared to the employees contribution contributions will be periodically adjusted based on actuarial assessments so in a nutshell the three basic features a short pension 50% of the average basic pay drawn over the last 12 months prior to superannuation for a minimum qualifying service of 25 years so if you have served for 25 years or more then you will be eligible for 50% of the i would say last drawn salary as your pension proportionate for lesser service period up to a minimum of 10 years of service where minimum pension is 10000 rupees per month a short family pension 60% of pension to the employees immediately before his her demise a short minimum pension 10000 per month on superannuation after a minimum 10 years of service so this is what it is now let us look at the old pension scheme also the features and we uh, after this go to the national pension scheme which was introduced in 19 uh, sorry 2004 and then we'll do a comparative analysis ops nps and ups so features of the old pension scheme guarantees 50% of the last drawn basic pay as the pension this provides a stable and predictable income after retirement 
and for this you don't have to contribute while you are working as simple as that it is all borne by the government in the event of retiree's death their family continues to receive the same pension amount as a family pension it continues gratuity employees are entitled to a gratuity up to rupees 20 lakh upon retirement it depends on your post so that lump sum amount is also here employee contributions no salary reductions for pension contributions during employment so no contribution but you get the pension means additional financial burden on the government dearness allowance pension is adjusted periodically based on da which compensates for inflation so it was also inflation indexed financial aspects funding pension is financed directly from the government's treasury challenges as life expectancy increased in india because it has increased over the years and you know if it is increasing ops became financially unsustainable leading to rising pension liabilities and a strain on government finances by 2021 so this is basically how financial aspects with respect to old pension scheme were the national pension scheme which was introduced in the year 2004 contribution employees contribute 10% of their basic salary plus dearness allowance with a matching government contribution this increased to 14% in 2019 means if you contribute then only you get the pension if you don't contribute no pension as simple as that pension amount does not guarantee a fixed pension instead pension depends on the accumulated corpus and investment returns now you will be given a choice when you are contributing in that uh, pension fund you will be given a choice where do you want this fund to be invested because you know it is not like the, that the government will be keeping that fund idle government will be investing it earning it increasing it giving you the increased amount keeping itself with some uh, it's with itself some of the increased amount so high risk investments you want medium risk investments you want low risk investments you want you will be given the risk profiles where do you want to invest that so it was like this that is why it was not fixed we could not say that how much pension you could get upon retirement individuals can withdraw 60% of their corpus tax free with the remaining 40% used to purchase an annuity for monthly pension payments generally around 35% of their final salary so 60% you can withdraw and the remaining 40% would be somewhere around 30 35% of your last drawn salary generally and you can take it as monthly pensions that 60% which you are taking is also tax free but if your contributions are such that your monthly pensions which you are taking is falling means making you fall in the tax net you will have to pay the taxes so it is like this investment options offers various investment schemes managed by pension fund managers allowing employees to choose between different risk profiles as i already told you tax benefits contributions are tax deductible now let's suppose my income total income is 10 lakh rupees and out of this 10 lakh rupees i contribute 3 and 1/2 lakh rupees towards pension in a year so my total taxable income will be 6 and 1/2 lakh so deduction deductions will be there under section 80 ccd of the Ta income tax act but withdrawals when i will be taking the pension they are subject to taxation if you know i th they are making me fall under this tax net criticisms of the nps no da adjustments means no dns no inflation indexation and all is there market linked so it there is this risk profile and all which you have to choose so what if the market crashes your pension crashes the social security will not remain as security as such mandatory contributions are there if you contribute then only you will get else no pension so these were some of the criticisms of this now ups versus ops versus nps unified payments uh, uh, pension scheme versus old pension scheme versus new pension scheme now advantages of ups over ops the so ups 2024 ops the older one where no contributions were there the so guaranteed pension with inflation protection like ops ups offers a guaranteed pension and family pension but it also incorporates inflation adjustment through ai cpi industrial workers addressing the inflation protection that was a key feature of ops so inflation adjustment was there in ops also and here also minimum pension guarantee ups introduces a minimum pension of rupees 10000 per month for those with at least 10 years of service which provides a financial safety net not guaranteed under ops so it was not guaranteed under ops it depended upon your 
years of service if you qualified those minimum years of service then you would be eligible for your last drawn salary but here minimum years is 10 year, 10 years that is very less than the ops contributory aspect while ops requires no employee contributions the ups contributory nature with fixed employee and government contribution aims to balance financial sustainability with employee benefits you have to contribute in ups no contributions were there in ops and government will be contributing more than you in you know ups 10 percent by you 18.5 percent by the government so it is like this advantages of ups over nps so nps 2004 ups 2024 fixed pension amount unlike nps which does not guarantee a fixed pension amount the ups ensures a predictable pension based on the last drawn salary offering more financial security that was market linked inflation indexation was not there in nps it is there in ups lump sum payment the additional lump sum payment upon retirement under ups provides extra financial support enhancing the overall retirement package this lump sum payment was a feature of ops not there in nps again introduced in ups that is why we are calling ups as a middle ground of ops and nps reactions for the scheme prime minister statement prime minister narendra modi highlighted the UPS's role in providing financial security and dignity to government employees, reflecting a commitment to their well-being. Second, mixed reactions were there. The action among government employee representatives were varied. The Central Secretariat Service Forum welcomed the UPS but continued to demand the OPS. OPS why? Because they did not have to contribute from the salary. Here they have to contribute. That is why the demand for OPS was there. They said that UPS is a welcome step. But our ultimate demand is OPS. The joint consultative mechanism showed cautious optimism, while some unions expressed dissatisfaction with the contributory nature of UPS. So they want everything to be delivered without contributing. So it is like this. Ministerial comments, Information and Broadcasting Minister Ashwini uh, Vaishnav told that the Congress rule states had yet to fully implement OPS and praised the UPS for its consultative development and intergenerational equity so this were the reactions so conclusion is that this ops is basically without contributions which is going to be a financial burden with the rising life expectancy in the country nps was market linked not linked to inflation could be a problem so that was there and you know contribution then only you will be getting here in ups a middle path is adopted you get a lump sum amount on retirement. You contribute, but government contributes more than you. Minimum guarantee is there. 50% of the last round salary if 25 years of service have been completed. 10 years of service have been completed. Minimum 10,000 rupees pension. If anyone gets deceased, then there is that pension. And importantly, it is inflation indexed, UPS. So, all these features make UPS more sustainable and that is why it is being lauded by the government employees as well. Now, let us go to the MCQs, consider the following statements and mark the correct one. First, the UPS will be having employee contributions like NPS. It is voluntary for the states to adopt UPS. Only one, only two, both one and two, neither one nor two. Consider the following statements and mark how many of them are correct. How many is the keyword over here? You, in UPS, the government contributes more than the employee. Minimum service of 25 years is mandatory to be eligible for pension. UPS is inflation indexed. Only one, only two. All the statements are correct. None of the statements are correct. Third, which of these categories is eligible for old pension scheme? Group A, central government employees. Armed forces personnel. Group C and D, central government employees. None of the above. Fourth question, which of these can be considered as components of social security, insurance or pension? Only one, only two, both one and two, neither one nor two. And last question, that is fifth, that which of the following can be considered as the features of UPS? Minimum pension guarantee for all those who join the government service irrespective of the time period served. In case of death of an employee, 50% pension will be provided to family members. So, this is what you have to attempt now the mcqs of saturday that is 24th of august the first question in which year did india and ukraine establish diplomatic relations 
it was not 1956, 57, 58. It was actually 1992 because Ukraine became a sovereign country after the disintegration of USSR. And that is why, you know, disintegration happened in 1991. That is why 1992 we established diplomatic relations. So none of the above is the correct option for this particular question. D is the answer. Recently, a term Bhishma was in news. Very simple question. I think I don't need to explain also. But yes, it is a makeshift hospital which has been gifted by India to Ukraine. What does three Fs signify in the context of Russia-Ukraine war? These three Fs became too expensive or inflation was experienced in these three Fs and which impacted the entire world. And the impact was more on the, I would say, developing and the underdeveloped world. So it was basically fertilizers, food and fuel. I mentioned this in the video explicitly and this 3F is a standard term. It was picked up by India during its G20 presidency as well. Consider the following statements and mark the correct one. The visit to Ukraine by the Indian Prime Minister is the first in the history. Yes, he has become the first Prime Minister to visit uh, Ukraine in history. Indian PM paid homage to Jam Sahib Digvijay Singhji, Ranjit Singhji, Jadeja of Navanagar in Ukraine. No, it was done in Poland. In Ukraine, though, he paid homage to those children who lost their lives and Mahatma Gandhi. So, this statement is wrong. This is right. So only one is going to be the correct option for this. And with this, we have reached the end of today's class. I will be seeing you tomorrow now with more such informative news pieces. Till then, you guys very well know what to do. Keep studying, keep reading, keep writing and most importantly, keep revising. Namaste. Jai Hind.